Dr. Kathleen. I would like to know all my family has Alzheimer's. What is the possibility that I would get Alzheimer's? Or is there any possibility that I'm going to get it? Because my father had it, my mother had it, and all my aunts had it. I'm going to let Dr. Gringo talk a bit about the genetics and the genes involved, but it's a very good question. Alzheimer's disease itself can be inherited, although that's uh, that's a more rare form of Alzheimer's disease. Most Alzheimer's disease is not inherited from one generation to the next very clearly. Obviously, I can't speak for the specifics of your family, but it, it, it's certainly a reasonable concern. Remember that Alzheimer's disease um, is part of a larger problem of memory loss and dementia with aging. And sometimes people are classified with Alzheimer's disease who don't necessarily truly have Alzheimer's per se and may have some other problem. So I think that it, it, it would be very important to make sure that those members of your family that, uh, that have Alzheimer's disease have been properly evaluated by a specialist in the field to make sure that they really have that disease. Um, and then, of course, you can, uh, then w those experts could counsel you appropriately as to what your risks might be. But understand that it is, it is sort of a rare form that is, that is truly inherited. How old were your parents when they got Alzheimer's disease? They got it when they were in their 60s. Yeah, that's on the margin. The reason I asked is because, as Dr. Kaplan indicated, there are two basic categories of Alzheimer's disease. There's what's called early onset, which can happen anywhere from 40 to your mid-60s. And that's genetically determined. And if your parents said that, then there's an extremely high chance that you would get it. Since they had it in their 80s, this is what is called sporadic Alzheimer's disease. And we know much less about the causes of it because in the case of the early onset, we know specific genes. There are three different kinds of genes which can be mutated. And one or another of those genes is responsible for almost all Alzheimer's. In the late onset, the probability of your getting Alzheimer's is almost no different from that of someone whose parents did not have Alzheimer's. So enjoy your lunch. You have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Marvin? That was a very good question because I think that is probably one of the most commonly asked questions by people. Is it genetic? Yes. Marvin, we have one last question right over here. Go ahead. I just want to know that with all the new medication and everything that's uh, there in trial right now, that do they have anything that's going to be for those uh, people that are like wanders, like you give them the Aricep and the Nemethine and they still wander off, they get lost. Is there any medication that's going to be in the near future that's going to make them non-mobile? We have a lot of problems with the ones that are mobile that able to get out the house and it's a lot of problem because they get lost um, the percentage of the time and they can't come back. So is there any medication that are being tried that gonna uh, alleviate that problem? The medications that are being tried, if they are successful, and I think it, they will be, uh, uh, are going to alleviate all of these symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, including people going out and getting lost. Get one more, or is that it? We've got to keep on our time schedule. Hello, I'm over here, sir. Hi. Hello. Yes. I'm over here. Hi there. Okay. Julianne Jack here. Okay. Go I'm ahead. asking. Last question. Go ahead. All right. Last question. I'm asking. Since there's such a controversy about stem cells. Why are we wasting stem cells every time a baby is born and the umbilical cord is thrown into the trash? This could be research material and it would be above and beyond both congressional and religious controversy because this is stuff that is thrown out. This could easily be the saving grace for those with Alzheimer's and also those who have other neuromuscular diseases. My, I'm not a personal friend of Rush Limbaugh, 
However, I believe that the people who are take such an adamant position against uh, stem cell research or against any kind of stem cells, or no matter where they arrive from, for example, in in vitro fertilization, there are millions of eggs that are thrown out. And my understanding is that the people who oppose the research also exclude those as a possible source of uh, stem cells. I'm, I'm virtually sure. Well, you are preaching to the converted, madam. The, the only thing I will say is the cord blood cells, which is what you're referring to, there are people who are certainly, who are working on them. It's not just a, a that's, that's really not so much a political issue as it is a scientific one. Um, unfortunately, uh, it, with all of the debate about adult stem cells and stem cells from cord blood, the fact is, is that embryonic stem cells really are scientifically and therapeutically far superior to cells from these other sources and that's what creates this ongoing problem. So while you're absolutely 100% right that if we could get those to work better, it would be a, a solution to this problem, as of now it's still a big technical hurdle.